Now I'm going to show you the chart, guys. It's bonkers. It's over 100 years of data. So you'll see these capital rotation events happen over and over. But if you don't zoom back to the left, you don't see them. We're setting a bit of a historic precedent here. Was it really that event that caused the rally to go up? The economy is going to start suffering pain. That's going to be bonkers. Okay, guys, it's Kevin Wadsworth and Patrick Karim. Welcome back to another episode of Talking Trades. And uh, we're talking about gold today and uh, we're talking about the stock market two critically important asset classes gold and the s p 500 patrick what are you going to tell us today all right thanks kevin look you might think we're on repeat but we're this is critical critical charts this is capital rotation event uh, this is something and i'm going to show you the chart guys it's bonkers it's over 100 years of data so you'll see these capital rotation events happen over and over but if you don't zoom back to the left you don't see them. And if you always think that US stocks always outperform gold, that Bitcoin always outperforms gold, and then you don't realize, hey, hold on, there's cycles in here. There's secular cycles that when they change, the probabilities of my um, tech play, my Bitcoin play, my SPX play has less chances of going up, but furthermore, it has less chances of going up against gold, price and gold, right? Because gold can go up, uh, US stocks could go up, but what if gold's outperforming your U.S. stocks, right? Are you really in the good place, you know? So it's all, it's all information you got to think about. You got to understand that when these capital rotation events happen and the, all that money slushing in into the financial world, it's like instead of going majority into stocks, it starts going into gold or alternative asset classes. Then look, what, what's wrong with getting the evidence and just, you know, checking it out, making sure that you're on the right side of that track. So I'll show you the chart, guys. I'll go to some details right there. This is the 100-year chart. Look, it starts in 1916 of gold versus SPX. And these capital rotation events, the, these major cycles where one's outperforming the other, when that changes, you really got to pay attention to that. So I'll start with the first one here. This is gold underperforming SPX. So as that's going down, gold's having a hard time. You're better in SPX. Yes, gold is pegged, but it's still underperforming it, going down. Once that breaks to the upside, either the stock market's going down and often it will be instigated by the stock market rolling over. Then after that, gold outperforms. You want to be in there until once again, it breaks down and then you're better. You have this crazy run in the 1950s, 60s, 70s, all the way to early 70s. At the start market uh, going up and then get what guess what happens stock market goes sideways it has a 30 percent drop a 40 percent drop a 30 percent drop and that the stagnation of stock market makes it that people are looking for for refuge gold oil uh, uranium silver all that stuff starts going up guess what happens they outperform so that ratio breaks out so that's a second signal that's a second major capital rotation event in favor of gold uh, and the precious metals community at that moment. Great run above that seven year moving average. No problem. Just keeps going up and up and up until the inverse happens. And then you're in a secular bull era for stocks. Third single, we're right there, guys. That's a 2001. Again, close back above the seven year moving average, sideways and up and up, outperforming SPX. And that essentially, that, that, the whole stint here, that bull era, when you've seen the bigger landscape, that's just a bear market rally for gold versus SPX. I could have drawn another chart here, guys. There's a potential line there going all the way down here. And on the yearly chart, it's even cleaner. So this now, the setup, what we have here is higher lows set up close to the seven year moving average. Look at that zoom in right there. We're right above it. We've tested a few times here. We went above in 2020 above, but it's still declining. We're really coiled and tight. Remember, coiled and tight means the moving average is starting to go sideways, which has less drag downwards. So if you had a chance to create a new up move like we done in the 70s, the setup is right, right there, guys. I have here my indicator, my seven-year stock indicator. Just to show you here, rock the basement. Once you start going to that transition zone, that's when you have a chance to go up. The 1970s here. Transition zone, retest, up, up, and away, bull zone on top. Again, the 2000s, rock bottom, gold's getting destroyed by stocks. Guess what happens here? Transition zone, bam, bull era until we hit the power zone here for gold 
against SPX, but it's not just gold, guys, right? It's silver, platinum, uh, crude oil, uranium, all that stuff. Here, bear market going down. Look where it is now. Higher lows on the indicator. It really tried hard in the 2020s. Couldn't quite make it, but now I got an early breakout line or a wake-up line. So right here, there's a chance for it once again to go back into a transition zone to explode out. And then this is all the fuel. For me, the end of the bull era happens once we're, we hit that top rail, whether we stay in it for one month, five months, a year, two years, five years, that's another thing. But this is the strong, strong move out of that base, that capital rotation event. It's happening right there once we start. So to think that you're late, that gold's at 2700 2600 that silver's at $32. Those are their, their nominal price charts, which have been in bear markets for a while. Gold has been in a, in a bull market, sorry, since uh, June of 2019. Silver since uh, July of 2020. They've been doing higher lows, higher highs since then. That's bull markets for their own price chart. What I'm talking about here is bull eras. This is your in a bull market on your own price chart, but you're also outperforming other asset classes. And that makes it a much less riskier proposition because you'll have way more tailwinds than headwinds because the money flow is going into your asset class. So it's getting very, very close, guys, for that setup. I don't know when it's going to happen. We're, we're looking at the charts regularly, but the, the setup for that is there. Gold versus inflation, we've showed you broken out gold versus money supply, broken out gold versus DXY, broken out gold versus the Russell, broken out gold versus the equal weighted SPX breaking out gold even versus the Dow Jones. So there's only these two big ones left. It's gold versus SPX and gold versus NASDAQ. And when the money flow starts leaving those, then that ratio is going to go up, guys. But this is the chart that's going to guide your investment. Of course, it's not financial advice, but your investment decisions for the next 10 years, right? It's going to, it changes the landscape of where that money, all that slush of money is going to go in, I'm going to go in gold or stocks. And even if it goes in both and they both go up, one of them is going to outperform the other. And it's always better to be in the asset that's outperforming. And that was it, Kevin. That's my rant on that. I hope I, I drove the, the point home uh, and people there, they really start resonating with this capital rotation event we've been talking about for a while. Yeah, I think that's fascinating stuff, Pat. And the two takeaways for me there really is that, like you said, this hasn't really even begun yet. You know, we're right at the very beginning here. It's not even sort of properly broken out yet in terms of gold versus SPX. So there's a long, long way for this thing to run yeah. when that breaks out. And that was the first point. And of course, the second point is that you, you made quite rightly there, Pat, is that uh, it, this is going to determine investment decisions, trading investment decisions for many years to come. It's not just something that's going to be uh, relevant for the next year or two. These big macro capital flows, they really do affect uh, where you should be trading and investing over the next, what, five or 10 years at least. So uh, critical information there, Pat. Yep. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining us for this episode of Talking Trades. And if you like that content and you want to see more, then, uh, of course, like, subscribe, share the content, and we'll see you again for the next episode of Talking Trades.